Hello everybody! Watch this video to find out how to recover data from a RAID system built on the Terra NASBOX 5 network storage. How to create a RAID, configure network access, add a shared folder, create an ISCSI volume and recover deleted files. Terra NASBOX 5G2 is an easy-to-use storage server allowing you to access your files over the network. On this device, data integrity is provided by the RAID feature that ensures safe storage and easy recovery. A RAID-based NAS lets users add or remove hard disks depending on their needs. Just as any other data carriers and RAID configurations, a NAS is not a fail-safe option regardless of the RAID type it is built on. There are a number of factors that can trigger data loss. One of the most widespread causes behind data loss is damage to the file system or hardware failures. Power failures or voltage surges may affect the controller, hard disks or other hardware parts of your NAS system. Accidentally deleting, formatting, wrong configuration and other user errors also take their toll. One more thing that can cause data loss is when your attempt to flash latest NAS firmware goes wrong. When the NAS breaks down or the RAID system is damaged, you won't be able to restore it using the NAS integrated utilities without losing data, since hard disks are formatted during the rebuild process. In the end, you will just lose all the information currently stored on this disk array. Retrieving data from a damaged or destroyed RAID is no easy task. The matter is that all information is written in fragments to each of the disks that make up the RAID system. In order to access that data, you need to rebuild the decrashed RAID using the available hard disks. Such task requires you to have a special tool to recover data from disk arrays. In a few minutes, I'll show you how to create a RAID 6 system and what program should be used to recover data from the disk array if your NAS suddenly breaks down. For better understanding of how a disk array is built, let's explore the process of creating a RAID system on this specific device. Open any browser installed in your PC and go to the address where your NAS is registered. After that, type the IP address into the address bar of your browser. Type the administrator's password. By default, it's admin. If you have already changed it, then type your new password. In the Manager window that opens, click on the RAID icon or open the Storage tab and choose RAID. To add a new array, click on the Create button with a plus on it. Here, check the boxes for disks that your RAID should include, select its type, change its name, stripe size and file system if necessary. To confirm your choices, click Create and then Yes, when the warning window appears. When the creation process is over, you will see a window saying that the RAID has been successfully created. Files will be added to the NAS by FTP, so I'll show you how to configure it. To enable an FTP connection, expand the tab System Network and select FTP. Check the option to enable FTP and then configure additional settings. After that, click Apply to confirm the changes. Now that your FTP server is on, you can access the network drive by an FTP connection and write some data to the NAS. But before that, you should add a new shared folder. To do it, click on the shortcut Share Folder Add Set the folder name and access permission Then click Apply After that, connect to the network storage by FTP and add necessary files there. This NAS model lets you take snapshots of your data. It's a useful feature that will secure your files against accidental removal. Click to select the folder, the current state of which you would like to copy, then click Snapshot. and wait until the process is complete. In the end, you will receive a backup copy of this folder and its current contents. In addition to an FTP connection, Terra NAS lets you configure an ISCSI connection. 
To create an ISCSA volume, go to the Depth Storage, Space Allocation. Click on the Add button, give the required size, target name, and other settings. Click OK to confirm the changes you have made. The ICSI volume is created. OK. The final step is to connect it to the computer. and format in Disk Management, and it will appear in Windows Explorer. If you accidentally removed some files, from an ISCSI volume and you can't see them in the recycle bin, they can be restored with specialized data recovery software called Hetman Partition Recovery. In the case of an ordinary deletion, you don't have to take hard disks out of the NAS and use them to build a RAID system. Just scan the array and recover the files you are looking for. Hetman Partition Recovery identifies such volume as a physical disk, just like the operating system of your computer does, and it means you can easily scan the disk and recover the accidentally removed data. To start the recovery process, right-click on the disk and choose Open. Choose the scan type. In such cases, fast scan should be enough. Wait for the scan to be over and check what it can do. As you can see, the program has easily found the files that have been deleted. The last step is to recover them. Select everything you want to restore and click the Recovery button. Choose where to save the files, the disk and the folder. When the recovery process is complete, you'll see all the files in the specified directory. If your RAID is damaged or destroyed because the NAS broke down, or there was a hardware failure, misconfiguration, a firmware issue, or loss of access to the network drive, etc., you'll be able to rebuild the RAID and retrieve important files with the help of a specialized data recovery tool called Hetman RAID Recovery. It supports most popular file systems, RAID technologies, and types. The program will automatically rebuild the damaged RAID system with the available disks. To extract the data from the disks, take them out of the non-operable NAS device and connect them to Windows computer. If your motherboard has less setup ports or power connectors than necessary, you will need additional adapters and expansion cards. When the hard disks are connected, the operating system may suggest to initialize or format the disk. Remember to never agree to either operation, because it can erase the remaining information completely. On the other hand, Hetman RAID Recovery will identify the disks automatically, read their service information and rebuild the damaged RAID system. Below, you will see detailed information on the disk array it has built. To start looking for the files, right-click on the disk and choose Open. Now choose the scan type, fast scan or full analysis. We recommend beginning with a fast scan. This will take less time and it works fine in most typical recovery scenarios. If the program couldn't find the files you need, go back to the main window, right-click on the disk and choose Analyze again. Full analysis, specify the file system for this disk and click Next. As you can see, the program has rebuilt the damaged RAID easily and found all the files stored on the network drive. The previously removed files are marked with the red cross. You can use the preview window to see the contents of all files. Select all the files you want to recover and click Recovery. Then choose the path where you want to save them, the disk and the folder and then click Recovery and Finish. In the end, you will find the recovered files in the folder we have chosen. You can also recover files from an ISCSI volume in the same way. Open the disk. As you can see, in this case, fast scan is not available, but full analysis is. Specify the file system if you know it, otherwise leave the settings at their default values. The content-aware search option may be disabled unless you think it's necessary to use it. Wait for the analysis to finish. 
As you can see, the program has found all the files that have been stored on this ISCSI volume, including the deleted ones. All you have to do is to save the recovered files. In some cases, when a disk is damaged or its service information is erased, Hetman RAID Recovery may have difficulty in automating the array rebuild process. If the program failed to rebuild the RAID with the available hard disks but you know its properties, you can perform this operation manually with the help of the RAID constructor. To do it, open the constructor and select the Manual Mode option here. In the next window, fill in all the RAID properties you know, the RAID type, block order and size, add the disks it used to include, use the arrows to specify the order and replace the missing disks with empty drives by clicking the plus button. Also, you can specify the offset that helps to locate the beginning of the disk. Sometimes the program may have difficulty in identifying it automatically, so you'll have to enter the offset value manually. When you specify all the properties you know, click Add, and the array you have built manually will appear in the Drive Manager. After that, start the scan. Look for the files you want to restore and hit Recovery. Data recovery from a RAID system is a complicated procedure, so it is important that you treat the damaged disks carefully as you try to recover the files. With Hetman RAID Recovery, you can create disk images and then scan the images instead of the actual disks, so your damaged disks will last longer. And that is all for now. Hopefully this video was useful. Remember to click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Leave comments under this video to ask questions. Thank you for watching and good luck!